Hey guys and welcome to today's video that's going to be about the unwritten dating rules here in Denmark. Um, I made a how to flirt in Danish video, uh, I'm gonna put a link down below and I thought it would be kind of fun. Also since I just recently realized that there is a lot of hidden unwritten dating rules that people might not know about. Um, so I've been searching online and found a few and I'm gonna share what it's like to date in Denmark with you guys today and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, it's gonna be a bit chit chatty but I hope it's gonna be fun. So let's get started. So how does people meet in Denmark? Um, the whole dating culture kind of hit Denmark pretty hard throughout the last couple of years and it's become more and more normal to use websites and apps to search for, for love uh, and somebody to go on dates with. Um, so especially Tinder, I know that's very popular all around the world, but that is one of the most popular and normal places, especially for people my age, to find dates and people to go meet up with. Tinder is too many young people here in Denmark, kind of described as a game and it's just a fun kind of easy way to talk to new people and possibly find somebody to go on a date with. So when it comes to taking the first step and actually asking the other person out on a date, to a lot of women this is still seen as the guy's responsibility to take the first step, to take the lead and ask you out. So a lot of girls will be waiting for the guy to do that. Um, that still haven't changed even though we're in 2017. Um, that's just the game still. And is it okay to search information on the other person? Um, I think this has become a very normal thing to do. Uh, because we get to talk to people online that we don't really know and we know nothing about them. A little search has become a very like normal thing. It can just be to search on them on Facebook to see if you can find just an extra pair of pictures of them or just see what they are up to, what kind of people they are, maybe what they post on their Facebook, just to get a brighter picture of who they are before this date. So that is just how it is and it's become a part of this dating game when it's like online and people just want to know a bit more about you before they say yes. So when you go on the date, what is normal to do on a first date here in Denmark? Uh, most people want to do something brief and short that you can get out of pretty quickly in case it's awkward or you don't really like the other person anyway or the chemistry just isn't there. So what's normal in Denmark is to go for a coffee, to go for a drink, or to go for a walk. That is the most common things to do. And as I was telling you before, it is the guy's responsibility to take the first step and ask the girl on a date. So if you're interested in a Danish girl, you have to ask her. And you can try to use one of those three. But if you want to really impress her, try to think of something else. Um, all of the girls I've spoken to about this, we like when the guy has something else that he would like to do with you on a first date. Also, that's gonna be a way to remember you and you're gonna like stand out from the rest of the dates if you do something a bit different, so yeah. The next question to answer is, who's gonna pay for this date? And this is also something that I've spoken to a lot of my girlfriends about. Um, because it's quite interesting, we're actually starting to see a change here from still girls like when the guy shows interest by wanting to pay a drink for you because it is a way of showing that he's interested and that he likes to spend the time with you. Um, but a lot of girls are now also like, that we don't want the guy to spend too much money on us because it's gonna put a pressure on us to kind of, then we feel that we owe him something and we feel like we owe him maybe another date that we might not be interested in. So we also, I think we're, we're gonna see a, a change here from the guy paying for everything and now we are splitting up the bill or the girl can do something as well. Um, I think that's good to see because I don't really understand why the guy has to pay for everything but I also understand the gesture of him wanting to pay 
as an example, a drink because it's a way of saying I really enjoyed spending this time with you and I want to pay this. Um, but it is still often just the guy that pays for the drinks or whatever it is. Um, that's still how it is. Um, is it okay to kiss on first date? Uh, I was trying to search for information about this because it isn't something I've spoken to so many people about. Um, but it's not unusual to have a kiss on the first date here in Denmark. It's really not. And also when I found information, like the next, the next question I've asked is when is it okay to have sex? And if it's okay to have sex on the third date, that's how it is here in Denmark. Is that crazy? But if it's okay to have sex on third date, I could imagine it would be okay to have a kiss on the first one. Um, yeah, but it is here in Denmark. It's quite normal, not unusual to have a kiss on the first date if you find the other person attractive and you enjoy this time together. Um, but yeah, the next question. Sex is expected to be okay. Um, I think some guys actually expect it after third date and uh, that now we can have sex kind of uh, personally I think that's weird I think that's so so weird like sex shouldn't be followed by what number of date you're on it should be about how comfortable you feel around each other and if you want to have sex and if you feel like it's now on to do it so girls out there don't ever feel pressured by this stupid rule it's weird and I'm not gonna follow it myself ever um, so but that is it's the third day rule it does exist in Denmark and I don't know how it is other places around the world so please comment down below if there is some rules from this video that's very different from your country or something that's very like your country I would love to read that and the last thing we should just go over is what do you do after the date like who's gonna contact who and how long should you wait I found out, and I have never known about this before, that actually you should wait four days until you contact your days. And also again, it should be the guy that is going to contact the girl. So if you are on a date Saturday, you should wait until like Wednesday. I didn't know about that and I think it's the most insane thing ever. Like if you're interested in the person and you, you were like, I had the most amazing time. Why not just tell her that like the next day? Like, I had such a great time and I can't wait to see you again if you want to. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. If a guy didn't contact me for four, for four days, I would be like, okay, he's not interested. And I would just move on. Like seriously, four days. That is, I just, it just makes sense to me. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think about that four days rule. Weird world and I didn't know about it. I do now, but also I just wanna say, I don't think that a lot of people are following that. Um, just gonna put that in. So that was the last part of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's kind of funny to hear about dating cultures around the world. Um, I'm gonna put a link to a YouTube channel that I just found. They make like videos uh, like what it's like to date a girl from and then they take different countries and make videos about it. I'm gonna put a link to that um, YouTube channel down below. I just think it's kind of funny to see how cultures are different um, when it comes to dating. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a thumbs up if you did. You can subscribe to uh, subscribe to my channel under this video if you want to and I hope you're going to have a beautiful day Yup, thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye